oh yeah, it's definitely happening. Jays win 8 to 3 to sweep the Chicago White Sox in a three game set at Skydome. Oh, inject this game directly into my veins. This game had it all. A great performance from Alec Manoa. Hits all up and down the lineup, including plenty of hits with runners in scoring position. Teoscar Hernandez definitively rediscovering his power stroke. Trent Thornton not accidentally lighting the game on fire in the ninth. <laughs> yeah, this was pretty good. Let's start with Manoa. His stats paint the picture of a pretty solid start, but that does not tell the story. Manoa was great until the very, very end. He pitched deep into the eighth inning and looked tremendous doing it. He gave up some base runners and then got pulled, and then Adam Simber... Seems to be a thing about Adam Simber is that he's great when he has nobody on base. When he inherits base runners, he tends to let those base runners score. I'm not quite sure why that is. Anyway, he did that again today, and those got tacked on to Alex's record. So the numbers for him in this game don't look tremendous, but he was way better than that in actuality. He had a great start. I mean, it's not like Chicago's any great shakes right now. It seems like everybody's kind of scuffling. Yoan Mankata is deeply unimpressive. I'm sorry to say it. I mean, I, he's... Had superstar potential in the past, but I'm kind of still waiting to see it. Luis Robert looks closer to as advertised, but I'm, I'm not super sold on Moncada. And they're missing Tim Anderson, who's their brightest light and shiniest star. So yeah, it's not like he's facing murderer's row there. But uh, no, it's a competent baseball team, pretty good offense, with more than enough bats to cause problems. And Alec faced them down and looked good doing it. But yeah, great job, Alec. You did it again, as we've come to expect. Just tremendous. Simber, like I said, came in, and uh, I mean, like, he got the job done eventually. And speaking of Simber, for a game that uh, ended up being kind of a laugher at the end of it, uh, it was 4-1 to one when Simber came in, and uh, he let a couple runs score, and it kind of looked like we were having another trademark one-run Blue Jays win here. The offense kind of took care of that in the bottom half of the frame, but uh, yeah, Adam, you made it a little closer to the normal Blue Jays mode than I'm really comfortable with, so eh, not great, but you know, whatever, all's gravy and a win, right? And then the large margin of victory meant that Jordan Romano could sit back down and not pitch any more stressful innings than he had to, and then Trent Thornton gets to mop up fresh off his recall from Buffalo, and he was fine. Fine. This, uh, mop up duty is what I'm looking for from Trent Thornton, and he did it. So, hooray. But like I said, lots of hits up and down the lineup. Espinal was back to being Yespinal with a bunch of clutch hits scoring runs. Chapman, Bo, Vladdy, all of them found the hit sheet. I think the only starter who did not get a hit in this one was Bradley Zimmer, and he still managed to get on base twice, being hit by a pitch and then taking a walk. And for Bradley Zimmer, I mean, <laughs> we'll take it, right? But the star of the show and the guy we absolutely need to talk about is Teoscar Hernandez. I'm calling it. He's back, baby. He's back. He's been saying he's been close. It's been looking closer and closer. But you can see the swings are starting to get better. His swing decisions are starting to get a little bit better. And the power stroke has returned all at once. He hit a home run in this one, but it was a nice, sweet, short stroke. Ironically, it was uh, not as well hit as several balls that died on the warning track in Anaheim. But back in the sweet, friendly confines of the Sky Dome, yeah, that baby's gone. Combine this with the multiple doubles that he had over the course of this series, yeah, Teo's back. And Teo being back means that you can't just throw junk to Vlad anymore because that means you're just walking, guys, for Teoscar Hernandez, who, by the way, is back. So yes, I'm very excited at the prospect of Teo being back and hitting at the same time that Bo is continuing to hit. Those two things being true means that Vlad is going to see pitches. And when Vlad sees pitches, he hits him. So I think things are really in motion now. But... Interestingly, the way it feels, it doesn't feel like a big, bombastic, explosive, concussive, kind of up yours, everybody who ever doubted us kind of explosive game. No, today felt more like a train that's just gaining momentum. We are still just scratching the surface of what this team can do offensively, and I think we're going to see that very, very soon. Especially because coming in next is a very good Minnesota Twins team that's starting to scuffle a little bit. They just got finished losing four out of five. Yes, a five-game series. This season's going to be a little weird for that. Uh, they just got finished losing four out of five to the lowly Detroit Tigers. Uh, yeah, this might be a really good time to face Minnesota. Offense is picking it up. Bullpen continues to be solid. Bullpen is rested outside of Adam Simber, which is fine. Lots of other arms we can use. The starting rotation continues to look solid or oftentimes better than solid. Time to put a bunch of wins in our pocket, baby. And that right now is precisely what the Blue Jays are doing. They have won eight games in a row. Yes, that's right. Eight games in a row. 
and they have won 30 of their first 50 games for just the fifth time in franchise history. The last time that happened was in 1992, and I hear that season ended up doing pretty good. But yes, that's also instructive because this team now officially is doing better through its first 50 games than either the 15 or the 16 team or last year's team. Yeah. Considering this team has already had a whole bunch of ups and downs, a whole bunch of disappointing performances to this point, a whole bunch of injuries, despite all that, the Blue Jays are having their best start in 30 years. And this is what happens in a long baseball season, especially one that comes with expectations. It's going to be a roller coaster. I mean, you could just have the Dodgers and have them just win all the time and just kind of ho-hum your way to October. But that's not entertaining, right? We want this. We want excitement. We... Yeah, I wouldn't mind a ho-hum steamroll to the... Whatever, it's fine. This is fine. This is fine. It's great. It's better than fine. It's great. It's great. Anyway, like I said, it is the Twins coming into Sky Dome next, and it is Yusei Kikuchi coming in with a big old coin flip for game one, so we'll see what happens. But even if he completely lays an egg, I can see this being a situation where we get our first offense outscoring our problems kind of game. You never really want to see those, but, you know, if it's ever going to happen, this seems like the time. It should also be noted that we did all of this the last two games without George Springer, who looked fine and, and, and back to being his normal self in the dugout today, so I suspect we'll see him tomorrow night. But the conclusion from that isn't that, oh, I guess we don't need George Springer. The conclusion is, man, this team is deep. When guys are hitting, when guys are performing like they should, this team is deep. This lineup is long. It's terrifying. And if we're going to be getting closer to seeing the true form of this team, reheat the popcorn. The movie is just getting to the good part. So yes, tomorrow, Yusei Kikuchi, start of a new series against a good team that's scuffling. Gotta take advantage, put the wins in the bank. Other than that, that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for watching this channel. As always, like and subscribe if you are so inclined. It's getting good, baby. This is what we signed up for. Make sure you don't miss a game for the rest of this week, because I think we're going to see some really fun stuff. I'll see you tomorrow night.